important. Um, verse 7 of Psalm 142 says, Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Say, bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. When you are in the prison, when you are restricted or incarcerated, you can praise the Lord. And guess what? There is an attempt by some elements in the world to put the entire world into some sort of um, fear and bondage. But you see, God is going to deliver his people. You know, more than ever before, you see people coming out right now very sick, uh, very so wounded as a result of the vaccine you know it's obvious to everybody that even though covid was real but some people have taken advantage you know to to capitalize on 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 the human beings on the face of the earth to you know maybe get richer I don't know. I don't know what the conspiracy is all about. Only God knows. But we are seeing a conscious effort by the elements of darkness to plunge the human race into a cage, into fear, into economic disaster. The, the price of gas is going up everywhere all over the world nobody knows what is happening even the countries that produce oil are not left out things are happening in the world you know you can't even get a 2022 car to to to, to buy right now the cars are not available people who have made order since last year can't even have it to, to to buy i mean it's not yet delivered to them they'll tell you it's not coming until four six months time maybe the year is going to be over into 2023 before 2022 cars are going to come it's happening in toyota is happening in mercedes-benz it's happening in volvo it's happening in hyundai it's happening in 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 honda all vehicles all companies all motor auto companies and they tell you it's because the chips are not available. The cars have the cars have been manufactured, but the the chips that we activate them are not available. So, so it tells you that there is something going on. There is something going on, and then they tell you, oh, because uh, Russia and Ukraine is at war, so the chips are not coming. And now it looks like everything is coming from Russia. No more China. You know the impression we are getting. You know, things are not happening well the way they should happen because Russia and Ukraine are fighting. And before it was COVID, now it's Russia, Ukraine. So only God knows the conspiracy that the devil wants to put the world into. But listen to me, child of God, hear me and hear me well. Whatever conspiracy they will propound and bring out against us, the Lord have assured us of victory. Amen. He said he will bring us out of the prison so that we can praise his name. And we pray this morning. He said, God have had mercy on Jacob. And you are that Jacob. The mercy of the Lord will find you out and exempt you from this judgment. If your amen is loud, wherever you are, receive exemption from judgment amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for you that the troubles of this day, the trials of this day, will not, will not bring you down amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The, the, pestilence, the, the, the pestilence in the atmosphere 
the arrows of wickedness that is flying of this time that we live in, God will deliver you from them Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming to church. Those of you who are on, on Zoom, and those who are on Facebook Live, and those who are watching through YouTube Live, I want to thank all of you for coming. And then you have been a blessing to us. And your prayers have made us to continue what we are doing. And I want to pause at this junction to say, we need more of your prayers. We need more of your call to heaven on our behalf. That God will grant us grace to do what he has called us to do. Not just us, every of his servants around the world. This is the time we need church. This is the time we need pastors. And I said to somebody the other day, if God knew you can solve your problems by yourself, there won't be need for the apostles. There won't be need for the evangelists, the teachers, the pastors. There won't be need for them. God knew you can't solve your problems alone. That is why he said, I will give you pastors after his heart. Pastors who will teach you. Pastors who will help you. Pastors who will instruct you. Pastors who will pray for you. Pastors who will rebuke you. Because the world wants to live in a system where in a liberal world, where nobody rebukes them, you know. But you see, if we live in such system and we don't have a rebuke system in place, trust me, the whole world would be so confused. But he said he gave us apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints and for the edification of the body of Christ, for your growth, for your maturity, for your lifting, for your instruction, for your blessing. He gave us these people. And they are the angels we see around today that we should honor. So wherever you are, never open your mouth against the pastor and dishonor them. Hallelujah. And so we have come again this morning to share God's word. And uh, we trust that God will speak to our hearts again. Again, Father, we ask that you will bless us again today. Teach us. Instruct us. Cause us to understand your word. The word of God brings life. And it brings understanding to the simple. May we understand your word and let your word find good grounds to fall on this morning that we would bless by it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to speak briefly to us on what I titled Open Doors. Open Doors. And I'll be taking my reading from Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. Please stay with me. I'd like you to open your spirit, open your understanding. Uh, God told me, as I speak, I will be talking to people. He will be talking to people. He will be instructing people. He will be opening your minds and understanding to, to the past, the present, and the future. The Lord said, as I teach this morning, he will, he will reveal certain things to you, which I may not be able to to explicit you know explain to you but the holy spirit himself will interpret certain things to you as i will be speaking and so it's important for you to get your pen and your books ready and your bible to write because god will be giving you instructions while i am speaking this morning i'm going to be speaking in clear terms but the holy spirit will convey his words into our hearts and into our spirit and I trust that we will understand what he said. I'll read from Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. He said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. I thought someone would rejoice about that. There is an open, open door. A door that is open. A door of opportunity is open. A door of blessing is open. A door for escape is open. He say, 
I have said before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. This is interesting. It's interesting. It's good news for some people. It's good news for me. He says, he has said before me an open door and a door that no man can shut. It, an open door and a door that no man can shut. Good news. God has opened for us doors. And these doors no man can shut. These doors no man can shut. Which no man? Any man born of a woman. Any man born of a woman cannot shut your door. And so in case you are listening to me, and you are living in fear that some people are attacking you. Yes, it is true. They may be attacking you and doing some voodoos or doing some incantations against you. Listen to me. Trust in the Lord your God. Rest in him. No man will shut your door. God says it will open doors for you. And if you are hearing me right now, wherever you are, start rejoicing. That is how to receive by faith. Start rejoicing and thanking God because he's opening door for you this week, today, this month, this, this year. He will open your door and nobody can shut. Let me add to it. No government can shut. Let me add to it. No authority can shut in the name of Jesus. Why doors in this time? Why does in this time of trouble, in this time of financial meltdown? But listen to me. I've said this and I say it again. The God that I serve takes pleasure in giving prosperity in the time of austerity. The God that I know is the God that gives possibilities in areas where there are impossibilities. The God that I know is the one that gives progress in the places where there are problems. The God that I know, the same God yesterday, today, and forever, is the one that gives lift, lifting where men say there is a casting down. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a God who is alive. We serve a God who is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. What he did in the past, he can do, he can do today, and he can do tomorrow. In fact, God said by himself, he said, I am the Lord. I change not. God will not change. He's the one who opens the door. He doesn't shut your door. He opens your door. And this is good news for us that God does not shut our door. He opens the door. And he's going to open your door this week. He's going to open your door this month. He's going to open your door this year in the name of Jesus. But what I want to look at quickly and very briefly is the types of doors that we have. I guess I preached this somewhere before. We have four kinds of door. And the first type of door is the physical door. The physical door. It's the door that opens and closes at will. That's the physical door. This door requires personal force. So what am I saying in essence? Personal force will open this door. Personal force we open this door. If you don't apply force, the door will not open. If you don't take action, the door will not open. There are doors that will be set before us, but God is expecting us to take action. He's not expecting us to fold our hands and just look on and expect him to come and open the doors for us. He has set that door before us, but it is our responsibility to open these doors. These are the kind of doors that require our responsibility. These are the kinds of doors that require us to wake up early to rise up early and do what we should do. These are the kinds of door that won't keep us at home, but rather bring us to the marketplace, bring us to the open place for us to act and do the things that we should do. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, it says, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom, and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
heaven. That's what Matthew 16, 19 tells us. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys are in your hand. If you keep it in your pocket, the doors will not open. If you leave it at home, the doors will not open. The keys of the kingdom are in your hand. And what God is expecting you to do with the keys of the kingdom is to apply force with the keys. And if you don't apply force to, to that door, the door will keep staring at you. That's why I also know the Bible speaking in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. It said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, even till tomorrow, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And guess what? He said, only men of violence can take it by force. Only men of violence can take it by force. Can I tell somebody this morning, the way you are living your life, you are too gentle. You are too nice. You are too, you are too happy with yourself. Your skin is so bright that you don't want to hurt yourself. Listen, you will stay there and you remain a beggar until you rise up and apply force. Certain doors are not going to open to you. He said, men of violence, Take it by force. There are doors that will not answer to you. They will only answer to violence. There are doors that will not answer because you are nice. They will only answer to violence. There are doors that will not answer because you are tall and beautiful. They will only answer to violence. There are doors that will not answer to you because you have a first class and you have master's degree and you know so many people. They will only answer to force. And I pray for somebody this morning. Receive grace. Receive grace to apply force to your doors in the name of Jesus. As you step out today and step out this week and you decide to apply force to those doors, they shall be opened in the name of Jesus. Whatever you apply force to will open at will. I command grace upon you to begin to open your doors by force in the name of Jesus. And I declare whatever is standing behind your door and is holding your door not to open. I pray that as you apply force today, their hands will be broken from your door in the name of Jesus. The second door is the door that uses code. The door of code. Code. Code 101. Code 202. If you don't have the code, the doors will not open to you. Applying force to these doors will not open. Sometimes prayer will not open this door. It may not open the door. I'm not saying it will. It may not open this door. Some relationships, you think you are connected to people in high places, may not open this door. You may not need to ask for help to open this door. All you need is a code. If you have the code of this door, you can just press the code and then it will open to you. Let me give you an example. Respect can be a code. Respect to people. You, when you start respecting people, it can be a code. It can unlock some doors. Humility can unlock some doors. Pride can close some doors. Humility can be a code. Diligence can be a code. And one code that I also know is the code of service. When you serve people, Lord, you are using a code to unlock certain doors. Your relationship to, to them may not open the door. You can think you are close to them. You are handsome enough. But if you don't serve them, that door will not open. I've seen people I've seen people who stand around power, who stand around great men. They want to be great, but yet are not able to be great. But I've also seen people who rally around great men, who serve them, do the things they want, do their biddings, and yet they become great. This door requires code. And I pray today, God will grant you grace to apply code where you should apply code in the name of Jesus. The third door. I want to speak about this morning is the door that I call the door of presence. Getting into certain proximity can open doors for you. The door of presence. The door of presence. You know, we live around so many malls and, you know, you come into a mall or into a, into a shopping center and then you come close to certain doors. The doors just open. It's just open. You know, that is the door of of presence it is because you took your presence to that door and there is kind of rays that is connected to that door that as soon as it sees you coming it sees your presence approaching maybe you are just uh two meters three meters away to the door it opens to you that is the door does 
of presence. This door does not ask who you are. It does not ask you whether you are rich or whether you are poor. If this door does not respond to you because you, you are educated or not educated, it does not respond to you whether you are a president or the most common person on earth. It does not respond to you whether you are rich or whether you are poor. It responds to anybody. It can even respond to an animal. It's the door of presence. And I read something in Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48 about the woman with the issue of blood. This woman had the issue of blood, but guess what? She got her miracle with the door of presence, with the door of presence. Many times, those who see you will determine what flows to you. Those who are around you or who you are around with will determine what flows to you. That's the door of presence. She said in her heart, if I can but touch, if I can just come by and touch. And guess what? The Bible says in verse 43, she came behind him. She came behind him. She got close to his presence. She got close to the presence of Jesus. Listen to me. There are somebody, there are, there's somebody listening to me right now, whether you're on Zoom, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube. Like there are some of you, you just need to come close. You have been far away from certain people. Just come close and that door will be open. She, the Bible says she came behind him. Not even in front, just behind him. That's the door of presence. That's the door of presence. It's a door that is open as a result of proximity. And the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment, just coming close behind him. And the Bible says the issue of the blood dry off. Now, listen to me. You can change your proximity today. That's the good news. If you're in some surroundings that is not bringing some changes and blessings and open doors and breakthroughs for you, you can change your proximity. If you change your proximity, you can create your possibilities. And I'm saying to somebody today, there are possibilities that are in front of us. All you need to do is change your proximity. Change the people around you. Change the people you are coming close to. They will not create possibilities for you. There are possibilities God wants to create for you. But listen, if you are around and close to the wrong people, those possibilities will not be possible. Those encounters will not be delivered to you. So I'm asking you this morning, change your surrounding. Go, you, you, you can't say you are a fast runner and you live in the village and you are running the village. You have to move to the city. You, you can't say you are a wrestler and you are all you do is, and you are so strong and you have the ability to beat Tyson Fury and yet you stay in the village. You will die poor. You will die unnoticed. You will die unrecognized. But change your proximity. Move to the city and you see what will happen to you. Come on, move to the city. Tell somebody move to the city and you will see what will happen to you. I read a story in Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52, about blind Bartimaeus. In verse 46, the Bible says he sat by the highway side begging. Why did he not go to sit at the back side begging? Why did he not go to sit in a certain street begging? Why did he not go to sit in a certain junction begging? The Bible says he sat by the highway side by the highway side. Listening to me, some things will not drop to you if you are not on the highway. You better move to the highway. Move to where things are happening. Move up to around people that, that can create those things for you. Move close to them. Move to the city. Move move to the university. Move. Don't stay around. Don't do business like a local champion. One thing I know is that God has packaged every one of us for international exploits. God has packaged you to, to be great. God didn't package you to be small. And so I pray for somebody today. I rebuke that smallness in your mind. Get out of your mind in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that smallness. I say, get out of your life in the name of Jesus. Begin to think highway. Begin to think, think big. Begin to think where you're going to be and let it be big. And I pray for you, it shall be big in the name of Jesus. Certain things will not drop to you unless you are in the right place for it to drop. So please, 
I commend, I, 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 I strongly encourage that move to the right place. Move to the right place. I trust God is speaking to someone right now. And I know you are right. God is speaking to you. And God is showing you where you have lacked behind, where you have rested behind, where you have not, you know, taken action as you should. But God is telling me to speak to you to go forward, to move forward, aim for the big world. Aim for the big things. Don't stand there. Look, look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. For the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He didn't look at the pain. He, he saw a highway. He saw a big thing. He saw my salvation. He saw my victory. And so he endured the cross. Listen, you may have to endure certain things. You may have to go through certain pains. You may have to go through ridicule. I said it before, a man in the making is not enviable. When you are somewhere, you are rehearsing to be great, you are practicing to be great, nobody wants to relate with you. But guess what? As soon as you become great, La Tarusha, people will want to associate with you. Now I've made up my mind, my little life, that I'm not going to have friends again. Because anybody who can't be my friend right now cannot be my friend when I make it. If you stand by me right now, come on now. We can start together in the days of prosperity. If you cannot stand with me in my days of adversity, in my days of smallness. Have you not read before the Bible says, though thy beginning be small. It says your latter end shall greatly increase. You may be small now, but guess what? You can be great. You may be small now, you can be great. I heard Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey said something. He said, the only time you fail, the only time you fail is when you give up. Listen to me. I believe God is telling me to say this to somebody. Listen, you have been doing something. You have been on something. You have been on a project and you haven't seen result like you should. And you are saying, oh my, what's happening to me? Age is not on my side. Time is not on my side. And now you are about to leave that thing to go pursue another thing. Listen, if you stop that thing, you stop the flow. If you stop that thing, you stop the blessing. Stay in there. Stay in there. Stay in there. I don't know, but God is telling me to tell someone, stay in there. It will soon show up. Stay in there. God will soon show up on your behalf. Stay in there. The miracle will come. Stay in there. The blessing will come. Stay in there. Yes, you have dwelt too long in that place. It's no problem. It's no problem. Keep at it. Just stay at it. Master it. Very soon, you'll be the master of all. Praise God. And the last door, the last door is the door of timing, or what I call the timing door. Timing. What is timing? Timing is the choice, judgment, or control of words of when something should be done. Choice and judgment or control of when something should be done, or timing can also be defined as a particular point or period of time when something happens. Something, a particular time or period when something happens. One of the secrets of golf is timing. Is timing. They look at the hole, they see how far it is. The, the golfer can, you know, the golf player can actually know what amount of strength to hit that ball with. And then through timing, it will get into the hole. Now listen to me. One of the things I know about music, I'm not a musician, but I sang a lot and I sang in the choir and I sang in concerts and, you know, but you see, I know one thing about music is that before a musician can start singing, that musician has to wait for the instrumentalist to play certain notes from the beginning. And at a point, that singer comes in. Listen, if that singer misses that time, that time is gone. Hallelujah. He has to wait for them to begin another introduction. If he doesn't enter at the right time, an introduction will have to begin. Now, guess what? At the same time, this kind of door opens. The door also shuts. It opens and shuts. That's why it's a door of timing. There are many things in your life that you lost because you did not 
enter into timing. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, help me. Help me and have mercy. There are some things that we miss out of life because we did not enter into timing. And so it took us backwards again. It took us backwards to begin from where we began years ago. Now, we're supposed to be here, but right now we are 20 years backward because 20 years behind because we missed the timing. How do I know? Numbers 13, 31. When God told Moses to instruct the children of Israel to go up now and take the land, they complained. They said, well, we be not able to go and take the land. Yes, go and read the entire book of Numbers chapter 13, and then you will see what I'm saying. You know, God told them, instructed them, go, take the land now. You see, there are many people that God has spoken to. Do certain things, things now, and then you look at your circumstances. You refuse to move. You look at the help around you. You refuse to move. You spoke to one, two, three people who you think would help you, and they turn. They they, they refuse to help you, and you and you throw through the vision away. You threw the idea away when God was waiting for you to apply certain grace, to apply certain strength to become that thing. There are some of you who have thrown certain things away. You've thrown timing away. But can I pray for you if you miss your timing? The power of God will move you. It will take you from the back and bring you to the front. In the name of Jesus. God told the children of Israel, go and take the land now. They complained. They said they are not going to go. The next day, they made up their mind to go. The door was closed. The door was closed. Ha! Ah, the door was closed. The next time, the door, this is what I fear the most. Uh, and I fear that for me. <laughs> the next time the door will open was 40 years later was 40 years later before they were able to possess the land and enter that land that God has promised them to enter. The door opened and it opened one time. It was shut for 40 years. And it was in 40 years that the door opened. Can I pray for everyone, myself inclusive, may our door not be closed on us because we missed the timing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Amen. You don't understand me. You don't understand me. May we, may our eyes be open to see the timing of our lives. Amen. May, may I, I am saying this out of pain because most of us, me inclusive, have missed certain things due to lack of timing. And some of the, the major fact is that we are so afraid. We are afraid to take the future in our hands. And, and you know, somebody said to me, say, man of God, you know what? I missed the time to travel. I missed the time to travel. Now they have every resources to travel out, to take his children and family to study abroad. But the, the, the door is closed. They've applied and applied. The door is closed. Can I pray? Every door of timing that was closed against you, Igurada, Shata, Mana, I declare, be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. This is our season. This is our time. We must stop fighting ourselves because when we keep fighting and arguing and looking at what people have done against us, we will miss our timing. Listen, if anything has happened to you, move forward. You can't, you can't be correcting what has happened in the past and you are trying to make a mark in the future. Nobody does that. Nobody goes forward like that, trying to correct what people said about you, what, what you heard about you. Listen, listen, listen. You are too important for what people said about you. They don't know anything about you. They are only saying. They are only speculating. You are the only one who knows yourself. Don't care about what is happening around you. Don't care of what you see on social media. Don't care. I heard somebody was crying on social media. I mean, was crying physically. You know, a friend told me that the wife was crying because she saw what her friend posted. The husband had just, had just, you know, you know, rented a big shop for her and gave spent money and put clothes and, you know, made it a boutique for her. She was crying. Who told you that that is what really happened? Don't you know that social media is a lie? 
For those of you following social media and living your life, you will die of heart attack. You will die before your time. Stop following what's happening on social media. Don't, don't, don't decide to have competitors on social media. Social media will destroy you. Social media will destroy you. Listen, it's possible for me. I live in Canada. It's possible for me to go somewhere in Canada and snap my pic, snap a certain picture and put it and say my holiday in Japan. And then go to another place in North York and snap it and say my holiday in China. And then go somewhere else and snap another picture and say my holiday in Spain. You know, and I say breakfast in 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 London, dinner in 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 China. And then somebody is there say ah, and the person is dying of heart attack. <laughs> Listen to me. This is the time to make it. Your timing is just right here. Stop looking at what is happening. Focus on what is in front of you. The only reason why men fail is broken focus. Focus, focus, focus. You can't be chasing your life and be chasing people on social media. You will lose both of them. You will lose your life and you will lose what is happening in social media. And the social media will laugh at you. If you fail, they will put you in social media. Why don't you succeed? Why don't you make it so that, again, they will still put you in social media? You don't have to put yourself. People will be compelled to put you in social media. And I want to say this to African nations. This is the time where African nations need to come together. Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, Zimbabwe. It's our time. It's our season. Because right now, the whole world in Europe, in, Amer in North America, is in shambles. Things are happening. If you live around this part of the world, you, you would... You, the, the, the system, if, you are, if you are here, you would discover that the, the system here is like... An old man whom everybody is praying, you know, some people are praying maybe he's going to leave or he's not going to leave. He may die anytime. That's the kind of atmosphere we have here. We live in fear that anything can happen. And so Africa is the hope of the world. This is the time for Africa to come together and make it. If Africa misses it this time, I don't know what's going to happen. And I want to say to Nigeria, this is the time to make it right. Because if Nigeria misses it in the next pool in 2023, that country is done, is gone, and it's over. And that is why believers have to stand and take their place in prayer. And not just in prayer, in, 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 in voting, in taking up their cards. And everybody has to take up their cards and vote out corrupt people. How can a man say, I don't have a son old enough to be president? How old is his son? His son is over 40 already. His first daughter is over, is over 50 already, nearly 60. And then he said he does not have children old enough to, to be president. What a, what, what a nation. What politicians. And, and the, the most painful thing is that we have people around them, sharing them and saying, go on, go on. You are even pastors are there saying God is with you when God is not with them. Oh my God, if we miss it this time, it's a, it's a door of timing that has been opened for Nigeria. And if Nigeria does not vote the right person at this time, it's finished. Hallelujah. Can I pray? Can I pray? Can I pray? Whatever you lost through timing is restored to you again. In the name of Jesus. Every door of opportunity you lost, you thought is gone. God will bring it back to you. And enter into it in the name of Jesus. I say enter into it in the name of Jesus. I don't know if I can find it. I want to read from Joel, Joel chapter 2. Oh, thank you. This scripture just came into my spirit. Joel chapter 2. I round up with this. Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise God. Doors are open. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, 25 to 32. Joel chapter 2, 25 to 32. I round up with this. 35. 25 rather. Joel chapter 2, 25. I read. If you are with me. It says, and I will restore to you the years 
that the locust had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall not turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. But he started by saying, I will restore to you the years, the years. Listen, somebody lost something 25 years ago, it's coming back. And that person lost something seven years ago, it's coming back. And that person lost something last year, it's coming back. In the name of Jesus, receive it back. Receive whatever you lost. God will compress the harvest. He will compensate you in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 6, chapter 61, verse 7. Yes, 61, verse 7. It says, instead of your shame, there shall be double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess a double portion. They shall have everlasting joy. Instead of your shame, God we give you double portion. Everything you lost that have brought you shame. I hear God tell me to tell you, he will bring you double portion of all that you lost. Many of you are still living in regrets and in pain as a result of what you lost. God says he will give you double for what you lost. He will restore it back in the name of Jesus. Job chapter 42 verse 10. The Bible says, and the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. The Bible says God gave Job twice as much as he had before. You see, twice as much as you had before. There are some of you who didn't have before. If God had given Job ten times as he had before, he may, he may have killed Job again, you know, because the thing would have been too much. God just gave him twice as much as he had before there are some of you here god will give you 10 times much as you had before in the name of jesus god restore the fortunes of job may god restore your fortunes lord i pray for your people restore their fortunes everyone watching me restore their fortunes in the name of jesus restore their fortunes restore the fortune of my brother watching from nigeria watching from 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 germany restore re, watching from from canada restore their fortune watching from ghana restore their fortune in the name of jesus my brother watching from switzerland from from the my sisters from the uk lord restore their fortunes in the name of jesus god will restore your fortune there shall be testimony this week. There shall be testimony this month. Let it fall on you now. Let the testimony of fall on you. Let the glory of testimony surround you right now. Let the anointing that caused testimony to happen fall upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. He says, return to your stronghold, O prisoner of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Today I declare... God will restore to you double, double, double. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. I see God canceling debts. Now in the name of Jesus, I see God canceling debts. Now in the name of Jesus, I see God destroying sickness that was meant to terminate your life. Is drying up from the root right now. Is drying up from the root right now. Every sickness that wants to take your life and say you will not enjoy your restoration, that sickness dies. 
they will not see the light of day. That sickness will not see you in your prosperity. That sickness will not see you in your land. What did God say to us this morning in Psalm 142? He said, I will have mercy on Jacob and I will give him their own land. God will put in your own land. I'm not talking of just physical land. A large place to rejoice. A large place to enjoy. It is called Rehoboth. God has made room. God will make room for you. He will make room again and again. He will enlarge your coast in the name of Jesus. Can I pray for somebody? Any finger of the enemy stretched against you and have declared that you will not succeed and that you will not enjoy that power with us today in the name of Jesus. I know certain people in this world. Now listen to this. I know certain people in this world. They have told them they will progress, but they will progress to a limit. They will have some things, but they will have it to a limit. Listen, God is the limit breaker. God, God is the limit breaker. I command every limit broken now. Destroy now. Every bars they have set for you, I remove it. Every roof they have put over your head, I remove it. In the name of Jesus, who says you cannot live in your own house? Who says you cannot build your house? Who says you cannot buy your house? Who says you cannot drive a right car? Who says you cannot become all that God has said you should be? When God has said, I know the plans that I think towards you, they are plans of good and not of evil. He said to give you hope, to give you a future, so to give you an expected end. Anyone who has determined that you will not come into your expected end, they will go down for you. In the name of Jesus, I have a feeling to pray. I have a feeling to pray for somebody. Any man and woman in your family who have determined your where your blessing should stop, anyone who have determined where your lifting should end, I declare in the name of Jesus, they go down for your sake. In the name of Jesus, may you be lifted. May you grow now. May you rise now. Rise from obscurity. Let God take you from the back and bring you to the front. Let God lift you from obscurity to prosperity. Let God lift you from non-entity to an entity. Let God lift you from a small person to a nation. Let God lift you now. Holy Ghost, lift your people. Holy Ghost, lift your people. Holy Ghost, lift that brother. Holy Ghost, lift that sister. Holy Ghost, lift us. Lift that church. Lift that church. Lift that church. In the name of Jesus, I declare be lifted. I declare be lifted. I declare every ministry be lifted. Every ministry be lifted. Any ministry who has been down, that has been down and has been struggling financially be lifted now. Be lifted now. We need to be lifted to do the work of God. Otherwise, they will laugh at us. I declare no more laughing at us as a laughing stock. May we be lifted in the name of Jesus. May we be lifted in the name of Jesus. This is the timing. This is the day. God will begin to speak to many of you. God will begin to instruct you. Start writing. Start writing. Lifting is coming in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. You have spoken expressly about the doors you are opening. Father, we enter these doors unhindered because the Lord is with us. His rod and his staff to comfort us. As we journey through this door, Lord, you will be with us. Your presence will be with us. Open every door that is closed. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I trust that the Lord will bless you. Every one of us, including me, trust God for doors to be opened. And by the grace of God, I believe I poured my heart out today. I don't preach like this. The last time I preached like this, somebody called me from Nigeria and said, um, the way you are preaching, if you're in Nigeria, you can't preach like this. He said, you are, you are resting there. I said, well, he doesn't follow. <laughs> T.D. Jakes is in America. He's still preaching like a madman. <laughs> Praise God. You know, he's still preaching very violent. Not, not like a madman. He's still preaching very violent and very active. And there are men like Noel Jones. You can't give him the microphone and he's still. <laughs> giving the microphone is tempting him to, to, to do havoc to the kingdom of darkness, you know. And, uh, uh, and and so I am preaching out like this because it's the way I'm led to preach. It's not the way I plan to preach. You know, sometimes.